Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today I got this really cool software to show you guys, which is isolated remote workspaces by Chasm. So let's get started. So technically I would consider this a virtual machine, but I use that term very loosely because this is actually a Docker and container setup. The way I would break down what this software is, it's basically a disposable, isolated, remote workspace that you can stream through your browser. Now, I did also meet with the guys who actually created this piece of software, and they are really cool guys. I wish I recorded that session, but man, they are really cool. So they're basically a group of guys who work together in network security, went their ways, and then later on came back together to create this software. How I stumbled across it is I was actually in the process of creating something similar to what they had already, but nowhere near as good. Trust me on that. I tried to figure it out, but this software is like fine tuned. I always have one isolated environment in my network setup, just so when I'm doing some research or uh, clicking on some suspicious links, I could throw it into this isolated VM. And if something was to happen, I could just restore a snapshot. Take that idea in mind and they just basically did that with steroids. Instead of having to emulate a full desktop, which you can, they also have just the software installation or if you just need a Tor browser or Edge browser or whatever it is, they just have that instance instead of having to emulate the full desktop, which makes it so much easier to use. Now this is geared towards more corporate environments and I would say teaching institutes, especially teaching institutes like uh, schools and stuff. So imagine you have a classroom of 30 kids who are trying to learn Blender or trying to learn uh, VS Code or something like that. And in order to get the supporting hardware for each computer, say like eight gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM with an i3 or an i5, you're gonna be costing a lot of money just to get 30 computers for that one classroom. So imagine replacing all those computers using thin clients or even Raspberry Pi, anything that supports a browser and then all you have to do is just log into the Chasm server and you could deploy as many remote workspaces as you need. What's crazy cool about this is, yes, you can transfer files between them, but if somebody was to misclick something or go to a wrong link or destroy data or something like that, it's isolated. You could just redeploy it within 10 seconds and you have the same desktop as you started off with. There are a couple of additions for it. You can actually deploy it yourself since it's open source. You can run your own operating system, deploy this in your own home server, or you can have them host everything for you like a cloud because they have all the hardware that you need and it keeps everything up to date. So if you're a teaching institute that don't want to run your own hardware or a corporate office that don't want to run your own hardware, you can have them host everything for you. Now I'm going to be showing you guys my installation, which is on my home server, and it's very easy to get up and going. First off, you need a base operating system. It could be a regular desktop or it could be a virtual machine, something that you could run either Ubuntu, Fedora, or CentOS. And once you install the base operating system, you can download the script from their website, which is right over here. And I could just go to resources, community edition. You can download um, their script which will run the installer and grab all the Docker and set up the environment for you. Now, setting that up from scratch took about 20 to 30 minutes to download everything and get all the environments up and going. But once you do, you will be presented with this desktop. You log in through the browser and I am gonna show you guys the user part. And here we go. This itself, has all these VMs that you could just deploy. So if I wanted to say run a full desktop, Ubuntu Jamie, click on it, launch session. Now I'm not even gonna speed through this, I'm just gonna let everything go. And within probably 10 seconds, desktop is fully booted. That is it, this is my Ubuntu desktop. And if I wanted to say, oops, I deleted this icon, or I went to a website or changed something, or like I said, if I deleted all this stuff, all I have to do is go back delete the session, redeploy it, and it'll be like, I never left. It's it, Everything comes back to where it was from before and nothing's changed. It's basically disposable. I know if something goes wrong with it, I could just restore it within a click. And I'm telling you, the boot time on these are like within 10 seconds. And I'm not even using a super fast uh, virtual machine. Right now, if I was to tell you my virtual machine is running off um, a commercial grade CPU. It's not Xeon or anything. If I could show you summary, yeah, there you go. I'm running off an i5, eighth generation. This is not even built for running VMs. I just 
put it on this mini PC and that's what I'm using. And it runs that fast off this type of hardware. Now you can and actually enable microphone and your webcam to be proxied over to the VM. This way you could use Zoom or use uh, Telegraph or whatever it wants to your video sessions, which is really cool. They also have a way to transfer your game controller and stuff because they do have some experimental GPU stuff working on uh, these desktops. So you can actually play some games with it and you could pass through your controller. I've seen it happen. I haven't tried it myself, but I've seen it happen and it's really cool. Say I want to go to Google Chrome, boots right up. I could go to say youtube.com. Audio will also pass right through, so you don't have a uh, problem with that. And I'm using Firefox. I think it works a little bit better with Chrome, I just gotta say, but it works with Firefox as well. I've tried both the browsers. And say if I'm even gonna, mm, let, let me see if I could click on something. Let's, um, I don't know, click on this. Relaxing music, whatever it is. You can actually stream video through their streaming technology for their VM. I mean, it's not frame to frame. You might have one or two skip frames, but it, it's possible. Playing games means it's possible too. I mean, like I said, you might have some drop frames because you are running some sort of media through the browser, but the technology that they put together to get the streaming working works so well. And that's the part I couldn't figure out when I was creating my own thing. How do you stream this smooth through the browser? Now, another thing is that Say you have files that you want to transfer or upload. Um, I'm going to go here and let's say I wanted to do, go to my website. I'm going to grab something. I don't know, at the HTML. As soon as I hit save, it goes to the download folder. And in this download folder, you see how it has like these things? I could just head over here and click on the download and I could download exactly what's in those things. So if I was to download here, it'll actually download to my browser. So that's how you're able to transfer files. You can also upload files. So if I want to upload something back into that area, I could just go to open the folder here. And let's say I wanted to transfer an image. Okay, so I'm gonna upload, click here, or you could drag it over. I'm gonna go to my downloads, and then I'm just gonna, where's that picture I had? Here you go, a picture that I wanted to send over, which is a PNG, open. It uploads over to that area. And all I have to do is go over to the upload folder and there's my picture. Now, if I wanted to, can I set it as wallpaper? Yeah, set it as wallpaper. There you go. I mean, it's not gonna save the wallpaper, but the point is you can actually transfer files from and there, just so if you're working with something, you are able to transfer files. Now I'm gonna get out of here and go back to my workspaces. It still runs. Like I could hit resume and it'll go back to the desktop as soon as possible. But if I want to like destroy it and completely start from scratch, I could just go to delete and then recreate it. Now, what I use most in this instance is Tor. I use this a lot and I'm going to show you why in a second because they have a really cool extension. I use Teams because Linux Teams don't work very well. So I am forced to use this one, which works out pretty well. I just literally did a meeting with this yesterday. Um, I also use a Chrome browser, FileZilla, and that's about it. Those are the four that I mainly use. I don't even jump into a desktop because I already have a bunch of desktop, but if you need it to test something, you can. Oh, and I've also tested VS Code just so if I needed some auto completion when I'm doing a quick Python thing, I could just you know throw up a VS Code on here. Now, what you see here is basically everything here is deployable. I could click on it and it'll open. And also there are about another 10 or 15 more VMs that I didn't even unlock. You could just enable it this is they're not all enabled so there are more than just what meets the eye you can say now if i wanted to go say hmm, i'm gonna go into google okay you know what this is perfect um this is something with the moon i'm gonna right click and open link in chasm that's basically the extension that i'm using it will automatically deploy the tor browser into a new tab that's how i set it to a new tab and it runs it in this environment and that way, if I had a suspicious link, all I had to do was just right click, run in Chasm, and it'll send the link over to the VM or the container, and it'll run everything through here, through a Tor browser, not just a normal browser. So if I was to check ifsconfig.co, this will actually not have my IP address, and it'll have, I don't know, I'm in Europe apparently with the Tor browser. So that's 
how well this works. And I use this a lot. If I'm, like I said, suspicious about a link or if I'm checking for something or if I need to look up something that I know is suspicious, you know, just the Googling the term, I would just throw it right into the Chasm workspace. This is all isolated. And if I need to, I could either A, go back to my workspaces and leave that and check it out later, or I could delete it, not have a worry in my mind that it's gonna come back to haunt me. So that's the biggest reason why I use this a lot. I, I think I use this at least five to six times a day, even more, depending, because if I'm doing some research on network security stuff, I would just throw it into here. It's just so common that I do it now with that extension, it's just so easy. Now, I'm gonna pop out of this because this is the user environment, and I'm gonna show you guys the admin part. You can create uh, different local users and rename them, but here I'm gonna show you guys this is what you would normally see in the admin panel. Obviously there is the dark mode, but I didn't enable it, but you can see that um, image use is Ubuntu. They have all the statistics for everybody. Uh, you could see that I use the Tor browser. Sometimes I use Edge, um, Ubuntu Jamie. You could see I just turned that on, but I do use that and run it. But Teens I was using as well. Basically you can see all the instances and you can see how much memory it was used, how much RAM I gave it. So this machine, the virtual machine that I have, I only gave it four gigs of RAM, which is not many, and I'm still able to run it at the speed that it is. Um, you can go over to users, set up new users if you want. I got two of them like this. You can set up different groups. So if you got developer group, software group, whatever, students, you could change them all to groups so they have specific permissions for specific things. Um, agents, um, I only have one instance. So you could, if you have multiple Chasm instance, you could go through the agents and basically have a manager for all of them. Different zones, I have not played around with this, but I think this has to be related with the agents and managers. Uh, I think I need to have at least more than once installation to test out some of these things. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, you can cast everything. Uh, so if I'm on Ubuntu Jammy, or if I'm on the browser and I want to show another student something, or I want to pull a student's uh, information, or if I want to show my friend uh, certain things I'm doing, I can literally cast the desktop to another computer or another browser or even to a TV. You could just cast that instance, which is really cool. Um, you have sessions, which is none because I you know, got rid of all my sessions. Here's the interesting part, which is the images. Now I'm gonna deploy, open this up and go to say 50. You could see they're not enabled. There's actually Atom, Audacity, CUDA development, uh, Deluge, if you want to do some torrenting. Um, they have Doom, the game, uh, Inkscape. Like there's a whole bunch of them that I didn't even enable. What I could do is just go into there, go to edit, and then hit this enable mark, and it'll actually allow whoever the user is to have access to the Doom container, and they could actually just play around with it. Now, if you're a developer, you can actually set up some API keys and you can monitor everything. If you want, don't want to use their dashboard and you wanted to use some other things, you can uh, set this up over here. You have web filters. So if you wanted to block specific you know, websites or domains, you could just do it through here. So all the domains would be blocking that specific uh, list. Branding obviously is something you will need to purchase with them to get, add your own logo. If you're a corporate environment that needs a logo or something, you could go through this and add a licensing. And then you got your settings, uh, different names for your host, what you wanna do when you wanna scale down and stuff. Uh, authentication, you could use LDAP, uh, OpenID, which is if you got Google. The OpenID was pretty interesting. I didn't think they would add that, but yeah, the OpenID, system information, and then logging to see who did what and what did whatever. So the administration panel allows you to basically control over what's going on and what you wanna add. Anyway, that is it for me. I highly encourage you guys to play around with this, if, especially if you guys need a disposable environment, something that you, do a lot of where you go to suspicious websites or you go to websites that you don't want to store the history for or whatever it is this works for you this will deploy super quick you could destroy it really quick and there's no trace or evidence that something happened it's all isolated so yeah if you are interested in this type of environment i would urge you to just set this up at least just for a couple of browsers not even the full desktop environment it is really worth it. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.